Good morning, everyone. We're going to come into uh, the middle of the mat, so that's where we're going to begin today. Just make sure that you have any of your props handy so that if you feel you need them, you can have them accessible. And so we're going to sit up nice and tall and just maybe kind of move the flesh from your buttocks. Just rock it out side to side and let the shoulders lift up towards the ears and then roll your shoulders back and down. And draw your navel into the back of the spine. And let the hands come to rest onto your knees. Let your shoulders relax down away from your ears. And then let your eyes gently close. So beginning in this seated position, you want to feel that you're comfortable. If you feel that you need to sit on your block, you can go ahead and sit on the block. So as your eyes close, just take a few moments just to notice what you're feeling within your body. You're noticing any tightness or tension. And so not just not looking at where it's coming from, but just noticing where it kind of sits in your body. And with your eyes closed, just start to begin your ujjayi breath. So you want to let that breath flow in and out through the back of your throat, drawing it in through the nose, and then exhaling out through the nose, but just making a nice smooth rhythm of that breath. And each time that you inhale and exhale, you want to hear a sound. So the sound should be similar to what you would hear if you were at the ocean, or if you heard a wave coming in or a sound that might be similar if you were going to say ha, but with your lips closed. So it really originates at the back of the throat. So we don't want to really feel that you're forcing this. It should be something that feels natural to breathe in and out. So it shouldn't cause any tightness or tension in your body. It should help you relax and let go of that tightness or tension. So let's stay here for another moment or two, just connecting to our ujjayi breath. And while we're connecting to the breath, just feel that you become more and more present. You begin to let go and allow yourself to really feel that you're here and now in this moment. And begin to notice how each moment is here and then it's gone. And then the next one comes and then it's gone. So all you have is the present moment. And then slowly let your eyes open and try to maintain and continue to maintain that breath throughout your practice. And continue to sit up nice and tall. Chin is level with the mat. Take an inhale. And on your exhale, take your left ear over to the left shoulder. So draw your right shoulder down and just feel the right side of your neck opening. So if you feel that it's too tense or tight, bring your head back up center a little bit more so that you feel that you can relax into that uh, stretch through the right side of your neck. Just let the head hang over towards the shoulder. And come back up through center, inhaling, and then exhale, let the right ear fall gently over to the right shoulder. Let the left shoulder move down, and just let the head relax down, so that you want to really feel that your head is creating the stretch. And inhale back up to center, and as you exhale, this time let's lower the chin to the chest. So now we're going to feel the head bringing the head as far down, chin into the chest as far down as possible, and you want to feel a stretch opening through the lower back. And right from here, just rock your head over to the left side, and bring the head back down as the chin comes to the chest, and gently take your head over to the right side. And you want to do this a couple of times, and as you're doing it, be mindful that you're not whipping your head too quickly over from side to side. You're just being slow and feel the control of the movement, really experiencing the stretch. So notice what happens as you take your head from side to side. 
So this is keeping our awareness in the present moment, just noticing as we're moving our head from side to side. And we'll take it one more time over to the left side. And then we'll bring the chin back down to the chest and take it over once again to the right side. And let the head come down and let the chin lower down towards the chest. Again, feeling the stretch in the back of the neck. Check in with your back. Make sure it's nice and tall and the shoulders are down away from the ears. Slowly open your eyes if they're closed and raise your chin level with the mat gaze is forward. Let's bring both arms all the way up. Inhale and let the arms slowly open out to the side as you exhale the arms down. Turn the palms up, lift, inhale and exhale. Slowly lower the arms all the way down. Two more times like that. Raise your arms up, inhale and exhale. Open out to the side and last time lift the arms all the way up. Inhale and exhale, lower the arms down. And from here, we're going to take our hands forward, taking it right into a tabletop. So if you can't roll onto your hands and knees, you can just take your legs out to the side and however you can get there. With your palms directly under your shoulders, you want to spread the fingers wide and keeping your knees directly under your hips. Tailbone is nice and long, shoulders pull back away from the ears. We're going to come and work a little bit into that spine coming into our cat and cow. So we're going to start here by coming into cow. So curl your toes, let your tailbone tilt up. So you're pushing your belly to the floor, chest looks up towards the wall in front of you and head up. And then flatten your toes as you exhale, pull your navel into the back of the spine and round the back, chin into the chest last. And once again, toes curl and lift the tail. Lifting the head last, and as you exhale, toes go flat and round through the spine, chin into the chest. And just continue with this movement on your own. And as you're doing it, maybe closing your eyes feels comfortable, feels like you want to do that. If you don't, just continue to keep your drift to your gaze just towards the tip of your nose. And make sure that your breath is flowing, inhaling and exhaling. And just experiencing each moment, each movement, inhale, present here and now. We're going to finish up one more round. So starting uh, once again, going into your cow and then finishing up into your cat where your back rounds, tail tucks under and chin into the chest. And hold here. Really breathe into the lower back. Feel if any tension or tightness is there in your back, just observe it and then release back into a neutral spine. From here, we're going to take the right leg and extend it all the way back. Draw the hip down towards the mat and allow the toes to point and flex and point and flex, point and flex. Circle your foot around going in one direction and then take your foot and circle it around going the opposite way. Now with a flexed foot, you're going to cross that right foot over to the left side of your mat and bring the ball mound of the foot down. So feel your inner thighs squeezing together and now pull your right hip towards your right elbow so that you really get the hips to square. Keep pressing through your right heel. Pull your shoulders back away from the ears. And then just turn your gaze to look over your left shoulder. Maybe you can see your right heel. But keep pulling the left hip back and the right hip moving towards your elbow. So you want to feel a stretch opening into the right side of your body. And then bring your head back to center. And we're going to take that right leg and extend it back out to the back of the, uh, the mat. And then you're going to bend your right leg at the knee and flex the foot. From here, direct that hip down to the floor. And just see if you can lift your right leg up a little higher. Pull your belly in. Try not to overarch the lower back. Just feeling a stretch opening in through the right buttock. And then lower the right knee back down underneath your hip. Both palms are still flat. Fingers are still spread wide. Left leg extends back. So keep that left hip facing the mat. Lift the leg just as high as you can without opening up the left hip. Point the toes and flex and point and flex, point and flex and make a circle going in one direction with the foot and opposite way, keeping that leg straight. 
and then flex the foot, push back through the heel, cross that left foot over towards the right side of your mat, squeezing your inner thighs together, and then pull your left hip more towards your left elbow. So you're gonna feel a squeeze in through the inner thighs, left heel pushes back, keep the shoulders square, and then just turn your head. So you don't wanna take your body with you, you wanna keep your shoulders pulled back and just turn your head. So keep the shoulders square. As you turn the head, you're gonna notice that you feel that stretch into the left side of your body. Keep pushing back through the heel, squeezing the inner thighs, and then return the head back to center. Take that left leg and lift it up, send it back, flex the foot, and bend the leg at the knee. Pull the heel into your buttocks and lift the leg up as high as you can. Keep your navel drawn into the back of the spine, working on just strengthening that left buttock. And then bring your knee back down to the mat. We'll take child's pose here. Big toes come to touch. Open the knees as wide as you need space and let your tailbone reach down towards your heels. Let the arms extend forward and draw the forehead down. If your forehead is not able to come onto the mat, you can bring your block and let your forehead rest on your block. If you are coming down to the mat on your forehead, you want to try not to have your butt all the way up. So we don't want to be like this. We want to really give ourselves as much room to lower the hips down. So that's why the block will lift the, the mat up a little bit so that it can help drop your hips back a little closer towards the heels. And just breathe here. Nice deep inhale and exhale. And then from here, we're going to come back up onto all fours. So take the hands right underneath your shoulders. Bring your knees back under your hips. Taking your right leg, you're going to extend that right leg back and flex the foot, press the heel to the floor, push back through your right heel. So continue to stretch back through that right heel as you feel a stretch into the right calf. So you're going to feel a pretty much a deep stretch here as you push back. Then lower the right knee down and then take the left leg and send it back as you push through your left heel. Really deepen into the stretch. Go as far back as you can feel that stretch, but don't go too far if you feel that you're going to let that leg start to cramp up. Bring your knee back down under the hip and then just take your hands slightly further forward. Curl your toes. We're going to lift the tailbone back and up. So you're going to push your tailbone towards your heels, then raise your knees, lift your Knees off the mat and lift your tailbone up towards where the wall and the ceiling meet. Draw the crown of your head towards the floor. And just holding in down dog. Not going to hold it here that long. One more inhale. And exhale, look forward and very slowly walk your feet all the way to the front of the mat. Do the best you can. Keep your knees as bent as you need to. And just keep your hands on the floor when you walk forward. Put a slight bend in the knees. And then we're going to hang in ragdoll. So you're going to let your head hang. You're going to grab hold of your opposite elbows or even take your pinky fingers into the creases of your opposite elbows. And bend your knees as much as you need to. Let your head shake yes. And shake your head no. And take a nice deep inhale and exhale. Really feel that your lower back is getting that stretch as well as the back of the leg. And then let your arms just collapse down. Just let them hang. Start to slowly roll up by bending the knees a little more, tucking your tail under. Squeeze your belly into the back of the spine and slowly roll yourself up. So you want to come up one vertebra at a time. Make sure that you're not coming up too quickly. So if your eyes are closed, let them stay closed the whole journey up. And once you get up to stand nice and tall, tuck your tail under, crown of the head reaches to the ceiling. Let's lift the shoulders up to the ears, roll them back and down. And let the shoulders lift and take it back and down two more times. Shoulders lift up and roll back and down. And one more. Lift the shoulders and bring it back and down. From here, let's take the arms and extend them all the way up. Open the arms out to the side in T position and take the legs a little bit wider so that they're hip distance apart. Pull the shoulders down away from your ears. Feel rooted into all four corners of your feet. We're going to take a twist turning to the left. So first reach the arms up towards the ceiling. Inhale. 
As you exhale to the left, the right arm goes forward, the left arm behind you. And bring both arms up. Inhale, taking your twist, turning to the right. Exhaling the left arm forward, right arm behind you. Raise both arms all the way up. And then take your twist again towards the left. And come up. Inhale, taking your twist towards the right as you exhale. Lifting up again. Inhale. And this time we're going to swan dive down. So keep your legs as straight as possible. As you come down, you're going to take your hands somewhere on your shins, your ankles, or you want to keep them just below your knees, but you don't want to push into your kneecaps. Try to get your back nice and long and pull your shoulders away from the ears. So draw your navel into the back of the spine. Make sure your tailbone is not tilted up. So you want to feel more that it's tucking in as you pull the belly into the back of the spine. Just slide down as long as you're not hunching the shoulders when you come forward. The motion comes hinging from the hips. This develops that deeper stretch into the back of the legs. So allow yourself to fold and keep your legs straight so that you deepen that stretch into the back of the legs. And from here, bend both legs at the knees and take your arms out to the side in T position as you draw your tailbone down towards the mat. Coming into our chair, raise your arms up. Stretch your fingers up towards where the wall and the ceiling meet. Gaze up and make sure that you can see your toes. So you don't want your knees to go beyond your toes. If you look down and can't see your toes, pull them back. It's going to really fire up your core here. So you need your belly to pull in, getting yourself down as close to the mat as you can. Breathe here. One more inhale. And exhale on your next inhale, stand straight up. And we're going to take that twist again, turning to the left. Exhale, right arm forward, left arm back. Reach up again, inhale, turning to the right. Exhale, left arm forward, right arm back. And lift up, inhale, turning left. Exhale, and come up, inhale. And finishing, turning to the right here. Bring both arms all the way up, inhale. And this time we're going to fold forward as you exhale. Keep the legs as straight as possible. And then bend your knees just to get your hands to touch the floor. And then you're going to step your left leg back. So we're going to take it into a lunge position. Lower the left knee down to the mat. And keep your right knee over your ankle. Flatten the toes on your left foot. As you come up, we're going to stretch the arms back. You want to make sure that your left knee is not going to be standing directly underneath your left hip. So when you take your arms back, squeeze your shoulder blades together, hinge from your hip, tuck your tail under. So you don't want to be standing right on top of that left knee with the left hip over the knee. You want to be pushing a little bit further forward. So square the hips to the front of the mat, raise your arms all the way up. If it's too challenging to keep the arms up and if you find that it's difficult to try an even balance here, bring both hands down onto your right thigh. You want to really sink your pelvis down, tuck your hip, your pelvis under, and push your hips forward so that you feel that left hip flexor getting a stretch. Nice deep breath here in through the nose, out through the nose. Now let's bring both hands down on either side of your right foot. Curl your back toes. As you curl the toes, push back through your heel. Let your left foot come forward to meet the right. Then from here, right leg is going to go back. So if you feel that you can't lift the leg, just slide it back. Keep sliding it back, and you want to go as far back as you can to feel comfortable once you come to this lunge, keeping the left knee over the ankle. Once your, right, your uh, left knee is over the ankle, lower the right knee down and flatten the toes on your right foot. Again, making sure that your knee is more beyond behind your hip. Take the arms and stretch them back. Lift your chest off your thigh, take the arms out to the side, and raise up. So just go for it and see if you're comfortable. If not, then you can always bring the hands down. So just try and take your posture a little deeper, but if it doesn't feel right, you can always bring the hands onto that left side. So you're going to feel your right hip flexor getting a stretch now, pressing that pelvis down, tucking the tailbone under, and pushing your hips forward. And then both arms are going to come down on either side of your left foot. And we're going to curl the back toes, push back through the heel to lift the knee. 
and this time the right foot is going to come forward to meet the left. From here, you're going to straighten your leg. Inhale, slide your hands up the shin, lengthen your spine. Fold on your exhale, go as deep as you can, pulling your shoulders back. And then lengthen again. Inhale, arms out in T, come all the way up. And going back to that twist again, turning to the left first. And both arms up and turning to the right. Both arms come up, twisting left, and come up, and take your twist right. And bring both arms all the way up. As you stretch the arms up, we're going to come back into our chair pose. So keep your arms lifted, bend your legs, pull the tailbone back. Keep the arms extended nice and straight. So if your elbows are bending, Find where your arms go out straight. So maybe they go wide out to the side, and then eventually you can close them in closer to your ears. Or bring them forward and pull the shoulders back, and then see if you can get that space there. So you want your shoulders to pull down away from the ears. Stand up nice and tall. Inhale, and let's lower the arms, taking them all the way down to the side of your body. Coming into our mountain pose. Turn your palms slightly forward, roll the shoulders down away from the ears. Feel your shoulder blades squeeze, tuck your tail under, draw your navel into the back of the spine. Keep your chin level with the mat, close your eyes if you're comfortable doing that. Now notice your breath. So we still want to maintain that ujjayi breath throughout our practice as we build up that heat and energy through the body. The breath maintains that continuous flow, so we don't really change the breath. So if you start to feel that more energy is coming into your body and you start to breathe a little bit faster, try to go back and look at that and slow the breath down. Because slowing the breath down and keeping that nice uh, flow will help you maintain the poses that you come into. So let your eyes open. Let's take both arms all the way up. We're going to take a big step back with the left foot. So as the left leg goes back, you want to keep your hips facing towards the front of the mat. So the left toes are kind of angled a little bit towards the left corner of your mat. Bend your right leg at the knee. When the knee bends, it stays right over your ankle. And then sink your pelvis down. Squeeze that, those inner thighs towards each other but make sure your right knee doesn't pull down towards the left side of your mat. You want to keep that knee pushing towards your middle toe, pressing down through the edge of your left foot for your warrior one position. Nice deep breath here, in through the nose, out through the nose. Both hands are going to come down on either side of your right foot, and you're going to pick up your left leg. Now, as you pick up the left leg, we're going to be stretching into the right hamstring. So as you pick up the leg, you want your right leg to go straight. So that's why if you have your block, you can bring that block, allow it to come in front of you, whatever angle helps you to get that right leg straight. So you want, when you fold down, you want to really feel that you're not putting weight on the block, that your abdominal muscles are holding you up. So it's just a, a the block is just helping you to keep your leg, your right leg straight. And just continue to fold so you don't want to be pushing too much pressure onto your block. So really feel the core engaged. And then lift up, remove your block, both hands come to the floor. And then taking that left foot, you're going to bring it back behind the, to the back of the mat. And when you bring that foot down, the right heel will line up into the instep of your left foot. So both hands are around your right foot. Take your left arm forward and windmill up for your warrior two. So sink your pelvis down. Now the heel of the right foot lines up with the instep of the left, toes, uh, left foot. And the left toes are more angled to the longer side of your mat, not to the back of your mat. So you want to sink your pelvis down. Keep the shoulders over your hips. Pull the hips away from your rib cage, elongate your spine, and try to make sure you're not overarching that lower back. So you want to sink your pelvis down. Deep breath here. Look down the fingers of your right hand. Keep those shoulders relaxed. 
Now we're going to take uh, the right leg and straighten the right leg while we lift the arms up. So inhale, lift the arms up. And then as you exhale, you're going to bend your right leg at the knee. And at the same time, you're going to turn forward and bring your left foot to meet your right. Bring both hands down to the center of your heart. And let's hold the hands here. So keeping the thumbs into the chest, big toes are touching. Tailbone reaching down towards the mat. Check in with your breath. So even though you may notice your heart rate is increasing, the breath still stays in that continuous flow, smooth and even. So giving you opportunity to just stay focused and present amongst that energy that's flowing. So holding here, option to keep your eyes open or closed, whatever you feel is comfortable. And just take a few more breaths. And slowly let your eyes open. We're going to bring both arms all the way up, lift up. This time the right leg is going to step back. So when that leg steps back, you want to bring it back as far as you can because your left leg is going to bend and you don't want it to go beyond your toes. So take the leg back. The right toes are angled more to the corner of your mat. So you want to rotate more to keep the hips forward. And as that left leg bends, the knee stays over the ankle. Pull both inner thighs together, pressing that right hip forward and really feel yourself trying to pull the left hip back. So as you pull it back, you're going to feel that your right hip swivels a little further to the front of the, the room. And press down into the edge of your right foot so you don't want your heel to lift. Gaze is up towards where the wall and the ceiling meet and lengthen up through the fingers. Try to get those arms as straight as possible. Anytime that you find that it's too challenging with your arms up, you can opt out with bringing your arms here, or you can keep your hands on your hips. So eventually, as you start to progress and get a little stronger and get more uh, under the deeper understanding of the pose, you can bring the arms up. So now we're going to just take both hands down on either side of your left foot. Have your block handy if you need it. You're going to rotate onto the ball of your right foot and let your right leg lift as your left leg straightens. And once it does, draw that right hip to the floor and pull your left hip away from your left thigh. So if you can't get the leg straight with your hands on the floor, again, your block is there. But you don't want to be pushing the weight down. You want to be lifting the weight away from the floor. So you want to really square your hips and you want to feel that it's fairly light on your block. The work is pulling up through that left hip, pulling it up towards the ceiling. And just try to lower the chest down towards that left thigh and let your head hang towards the block or towards your left toes. Keep pulling that left hip up, pulling it away from the top of the thigh. Take an inhale, lengthen your spine, remove the block, bring your hands to the floor, put a slight bend in the left leg, and we're going to take that right foot and take it back. So when the foot comes down, the left heel is going to line up with the instep of your right foot. And the toes of the right foot are kind of turned more at about a 45 degree angle towards the longer side of your mat. Take your right arm forward, open it up, and then windmill up. So do the best that you can to keep that leg straight as you come up. And when you come up, that left thigh is parallel to the floor. Shoulders are away from the ears. Shoulders are stacked over your hips. Tailbone presses down, belly in. And open out through the inner left thigh. So don't let your right knee, your left knee drop down towards the mat. Both hips are now facing the longer edge of your mat. Both shoulders are down away from the ears. And press down into the edge of your right foot. So you don't want to roll into the arch of, uh, to the arch of the foot or bend the right leg. You want that right leg to really be strong. Shoulders down. Go into your breath. Make sure you're listening to that breath, traveling in and out through the back of your throat. And then from here, inhale, straightening the leg, bringing both arms up. As you exhale, you're going to bend the left leg, keep the arms lifted, and you're going to swivel forward as the right foot comes to meet the left. And bring your hands back to the center of your heart. 
Once again, let your eyes close if comfortable or keep them open, whatever feels right for you now. And just watch, observe without judging. So just noticing now that you're out of that pose, but you receive the benefit of the pose now. So you're kind of giving yourself a chance to let it settle in. And then slowly let your eyes open, release your arms down. Coming back to our mountain pose, so allow the legs to come together as close as possible. If it's too difficult keeping your big toes touching, separate the legs just a little bit. But don't ever separate them wider than your hips when we're in our mountain pose. Tuck your tail under, extend the fingers down, turn the palms slightly forward, roll your shoulders back, and feel that your shoulder blades are squeezing, but you're not pushing your chest out. You're just squeezing the shoulder blades together. Fingers are reaching down, gaze is forward. So we're going to shift the weight into the right leg for a balance. So once you shift the weight into the right leg, really push down into the ball mound of the big toe. And then let those toes just stay relaxed. Start to lift your left leg. You want to get your left knee to come right underneath your ankle. And you want to keep that left thigh parallel to the mat. Pull that left hip down and bring both arms out in T. So this is our challenge here, just to hold balance. If you feel that you're pretty strong and maybe want to go a little deeper, take the right arm forward and the left arm back, but don't take the knee with you. The knee still stays forward, so you're not pulling the knee over to the right side of your mat. You're just lifting out from the hip and turning the waist and the chest. And then take both arms all the way up. Inhale, turn and square forward your hips and your shoulders, both arms out once again in T. And then release the arms and release the leg. If your right leg really feels that it needs a shake, go ahead and shake it out. Rotate the foot around. And then come back to your mountain pose. Again, toes are either touching or slightly open. And then lower your tailbone, press it down to the floor, pull your belly into the back of the spine, roll the shoulders away from the ears, reach and extend the fingers to the earth. And then just be present with your breath. Listen to your breath. And so as you're present with that breath, just notice the breath rhythm. And when you control the rhythm of the breath, you'll start to notice that energy just starts to relax. So it's not as intense. And then slowly open the eyes. We're going to shift the weight over into the left foot now. So you want to really press down into the ball mound of your big toe, relaxing the toes to the floor. Shift the weight over to the left leg. And then when you're ready, raise your right leg. Get your knee to come level with the hip, thigh, uh, back of the thigh parallel to the mat, and heel underneath your knee. Raise your arms out in T position. And breathe here. So you want to feel that you're squeezing in inner thighs towards each other. So it's a little area into the, the pelvic area where you're squeezing. And let's bring both arms up. Inhale, we're going to twist to the right as the left arm goes forward, right arm back. So keep that knee forward. You don't want to turn the knee towards the left side of your mat. Pull that right hip forward and just feel the twist coming out from the waist and the chest. And come back to center with your arms in T. And raise both arms all the way up. Inhale. Exhale the foot down and lower the arms all the way down. And go ahead and shake out that standing leg if you need to. Rotating your foot around, whatever feels good. And come to stand back in your mountain pose. Reach and extend the fingers down to the earth. So you might find that balancing poses are very much more challenging for you than some of the other poses. So always meet those challenges. Meet them with a beginner's mind. So don't expect that you should be perfect at everything when you take on your practice. Just do the best that you can and just let that posture be the best expression of the posture for you at that moment. And it's okay if you fall out. 
That's the way that we learn. That's the way that we get our body to understand how, what it needs to do to hold the poses a little longer, and it takes practice. So if your eyes are closed, let them open, turn the palms out, and lift the, palms, uh, the arms up. Inhale, fold forward as you exhale, flat back. Place your hands to the floor, step one leg back, and then the other leg back and come right down onto your knees and right into a child's pose. Big toes touch. Take the knees out as wide as you need to. Bring your tailbone to your heels. Rest your forehead down. And hold in your child's pose. Use your block if you need to. Rest your forehead. And then from here, let's come back up onto all fours. So back palms come under your shoulders, knees under your hips. And let's take the legs and extend them out to the side and sit down onto your buttocks. So as you come down onto your buttocks, you want to shift the, the flesh away from each buttock so that you feel your sits bones grounding to the mat. Coming into Dandasana, so staff pose or stick pose. Let your palms just come right down next to your hips. But don't let your arms go straight if you're shrugging the shoulders up. You want to pull the shoulders down, and if your elbows bend, that's fine. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, pulling the elbows in. So if you have a soft bend in the elbows, that's better than trying to straighten the arms, because sometimes straightening the arms makes the shoulders lift. But if you have the ability to straighten your arms without letting the shoulders lift, then keep those arms straight. But you want to really feel that more of the shoulders moving away from the ears is what you're creating here and so that the elbows may bend in but your belly is pulling into the back of the spine flex your feet so your heels are pushing forward and your toes are flexed towards your face keep pulling that navel into the spine keep the back long and then raise both arms up inhale as you come forward you want to keep the arms alongside your ears hinge from your hips so just feel that hinging motion. Then you'll all of a sudden find the resistance where you can't go any further. So don't let your mind take over and say, well, I want to touch my toes, so I'm going to round the back and round through the shoulders. Just fold from your hips and then keeping the shoulder blades pulling back, see where your hands end up. They might end up right just in the middle of your shin. Maybe they end up by your ankles, but you're not forcing your uh, hands to touch by rounding your back. So pull the belly into the back of the spine, move those hips back, and root down into the sits bones. So push your hips back and let your sits bones press down to the floor. Keep your shoulders pulled back away from the ears. And just feel your belly coming closer to your thighs. So the chest stays open, really facing more towards your toes until you develop more flexibility, then your whole belly can come down, and then eventually your chest can come down. So hold here for another two more breaths. Let your eyes close while you're holding, and just let go into the stretch. Notice where you're feeling it. Notice how your body is experiencing the pose. Are you open to receiving that deep stretch? And slowly coming back up, walk your hands all the way in towards your thigh. And then from here, we're going to scoot to the front of the mat, move your heels towards your buttocks, and lower yourself down onto your back. Pull your heels in close to your buttocks. And then once we're lying on the back, you want to come into a pelvic tilt. So you want to tuck your pelvis as you pull your navel into the back of the spine. So you're automatically coming into this pelvic tilt and your lower back is pressing down into the floor. Take your right leg and extend it up with a flexed foot. So let the leg go as straight as possible. So if you have a lot of flexibility through your hips and hamstrings, you may be able to get that leg pretty high up towards the ceiling. But if you're not, maybe this is where it goes. But get the leg straight. Find that straight leg and then see how high up you can lift it. Don't lift it up if you're bending the knee. So first, you want to flex the foot, feel the stretches through the back of the leg, lower back is pushing down, and then start to lift the leg. Now from here, keep pulling your navel into the back of the spine. Take your arms and extend them all the way up towards the ceiling. So you're trying to 
pull your right toes towards your face, keeping the leg flexed. Keep the navel pulled into the spine, and then just reach your fingers up, lifting your head. So try not to draw the chin into the chest. Try not to round the back. So keep pulling the shoulders down. Keep flexing that right foot. Really feel the work in your lower belly. Nice deep breath here. And then lower all the way back down. And we're going to release the arms. You're going to bend the right leg at the knee, interlace the fingers around your right shin. Pull that right thigh in towards your chest. And then send the left leg straight forward. So as that left leg goes forward, flex the foot and let the heel rest down to the mat. Pulling your right thigh into the chest, extend that right thigh out to the right side of your body. So you're opening away from your chest. Interlacing those, keeping those fingers interlaced around the shin, pull in to feel the stretch. Keep that left foot pushing forward. Then relax your left foot, slide the foot up, and place your right ankle just below your left knee. So now let that right hip just feel open. Keep the belly drawn in. And we're going to lift the right uh, left leg off the floor. Push your left thigh into your right ankle to increase the stretch through the right hip. So rather than reaching and using our hands, we're working on using the strength of our left leg to let our right hip get a deep stretch. And then lower the left foot down to the floor. And take your arms out to the side in T position. And we're going to take a twist, turn, taking the legs over to the left. So once you start to draw that right knee down, maybe the left, the right foot comes to the floor. Maybe it doesn't, but you just want to try and let it come as close to the floor as possible. And just let that right knee lower. Keep the ankle just connected to the top of your left thigh, and once you're in this twist, turn your gaze to look over the right finger. And once you're in the twist, let your eyes close. And just experience the space. Notice where you feel the deepest stretch. Return your head back center. Keep your left foot on the floor and right foot on top of your left thigh and just slowly lift back up. So draw your navel into the back of the spine and then take your foot down. Center yourself back to the middle of the mat. Keep that navel pulled in so you want to really feel the lower back pushing to the floor. Bring your arms back down alongside your body. So navel is pulling in. So you're contracting your abdominals. Left leg stretches up towards the ceiling with a flexed foot. So Again, maybe this is as high as you get the leg, but as long as the leg is straight, keep that leg straight. If you can, reach it up higher, reach it up here, higher. But feel that your navel is pulling in so you're not arching or overarching your lower back. Raise your arms up towards the ceiling, and then you're just going to lift up. So pull that navel into the back of the spine. This is increasing the strength in our abdominals. So you want to let your lower back push to the floor. So wherever your leg is, keep it there and keep it straight. And try to reach for your toes. Try not to round through your shoulders. And then lower back down. And once you lower, bring your uh, left leg in towards your chest. Interlace the fingers around the left shin. Pull the thigh into your chest and send your right leg straight out. So flex the right foot. Push the heel towards the wall that's in front of you and pull your left thigh into your chest. And then open the left leg out to the left side of your, your rib cage, out to the side. So really opening more through the groin area and the inner thigh, keeping that right foot flexed, pushing that left thigh to the uh, outside of your rib cage. And then soften the right leg, slide it back up. And we're going to take the left ankle, placing it just below the right knee. And just let your left knee fall open to the front. Pull your navel into the back of the spine. Just feel that stretch coming into the left hip. Keep the belly pulling in. And then when you're ready, raise the right foot, pressing that right thigh into your left ankle. So 
more you push the left knee forward, the more you open up that left hip. So just pull in, use the strength of your right thigh to pull in and stretch into that left hip. And then place that right foot back to the floor. Both arms come out and take, keep the navel drawn into the back of the spine. So you want to really keep that lower back pushing down. Inhale, keep the shoulders relaxed. As you exhale, we're going to draw the left foot, left knee over to the right side. And just come into your twist here. Both shoulders remain down on the mat. So don't let your left shoulder lift up. And if you're comfortable, turn your gaze to look left. Relax your shoulders and enjoy the stretch. Notice where you're feeling it into the left side of your body. And you may notice one side has more range of motion, so maybe you can go deeper into one side as opposed to the other. And slowly return your head center. Keep the ankle on top of your right thigh and then just lift up. Keep the right foot on the floor. Slowly come back up. And once you're there, bring both feet flat. So left foot releases. Both arms come down alongside you. And we're going to take our bridge pose. So keep your legs about hip distance apart. Make sure your toes are facing to the front of your mat. Pull your navel into the back of the spine. So when you suck that belly in, you come automatically into that pelvic tilt. And once you're in that pelvic tilt, Squeeze your belly and then start to lift your hips and butt off the floor and keep raising up as high as you can. Now, if it's too intense to do that, you have your block. You can bring your block and come into a supported bridge, whichever level feels good, the lowest level, the mid-level, or even the higher level. But if you're able to go to the higher level, you're probably able to hold your bridge without having support. So you your block would come right under your sacrum, and you would be able to kind of just rest here. So it doesn't really feel like you're doing much work. You're not really using the strength in your legs, but you are in a, a back bend here. And just close your eyes. And go up a little bit higher. You're able to, so maybe if you are on the block, maybe you can just see and lift your sacrum up off the block a little bit and hold here just for a few breaths. Keep feeling those legs pulling in towards each other. So as you keep lifting the legs, you'll start to feel a squeeze coming into your buttocks. Keep your chin into the chest, never move your head here. And then slowly lower one vertebra down. So if you have the block underneath, remove the block and let your spine slowly connect back to your mat very slowly, one vertebra at a time, until finally your sacrum comes down, your tailbone releases. Hug both knees into your chest, rock it gently from side to side. And then from here, let's bring both feet just flat to the floor. Relax where you are, let everything relax. Take a moment and just close your eyes. So allowing yourself to remain present as you're just resting here. Let's heel toe the feet together. Allow the soles of the feet to touch as your knees slowly draw open. So the lower back will start to automatically arch. The groin and the inner thighs will open. You can place your hands onto your thighs if you want, or place them right onto your belly. If there's too much of a strain on your lower back, close your legs. So you don't want to feel that you're holding yourself in a strained position. You want to feel that it's a stretch that feels good for you to, to be in for several moments. And then let your legs close so you can close your legs together. And draw your knees into your chest and send the legs straight out. So we're going to stretch the same part of the body we just did, but this time with the legs going straight. So now flex your feet, and again, remember, keep the legs as straight as possible. Pull your navel into the back of the spine. Start to let your legs open out as wide as they can, and 
you don't want to start to bend the knees. So maybe this is your range of motion. Keep the feet flexed and feel the work in the quad, the hamstrings. The backs of the knees are pushing towards the wall in front of you. And just let your legs open as long as they stay straight, open as wide as you can. But you don't want to bend the legs and open them out. We want them to be straight, even if this is the position. Because opening up and letting gravity draw the legs out will stretch into your inner thigh. So you want to really open up to the best possibility, keeping those legs straight. So if this is it, don't force and let the legs go out by bending the knees. So just let those legs open. Keep those feet flat so that you really increase that stretch and awareness into the inner thigh. Take your hands behind your thighs or just to the sides of your thighs, actually, and close your legs. One last hug, pull those knees into your chest and rock gently from side to side. Nice massage into your lower back. Preparing now for relaxation. So let your feet come to the floor. Before you come down completely on your back and your legs extend, you might want to put any warm clothing on, or even if you have a blanket, you can put that on you. And then let your legs extend straight out. And once your legs are extended, make sure that they're open a little bit, so about hip distance apart and feel that your feet just flop or gently fall open to the sides, allowing the arms to fall out gently to the sides as well. Squeeze your shoulder blades together and then let the shoulders relax. Close your eyes as you're here and make sure that you're looking at your body. Take notice of your chin. Is your chin all the way up towards the ceiling? If it is, just slightly draw the chin to your chest so that the, lock, the back of your neck becomes straight. Continue to close your eyes. And we'll take a nice cleansing breath. So one deep inhale through your nose. Open your mouth and sigh it out. <sighs> Let it all go. Let every bit of tension release from your body with that exhale and close your mouth. Keep your eyes closed. Let your body relax. Let go of any sense of struggle and feel a sense of ease and openness. As you journey deep into your relaxation, we let everything go that does not serve us. Those negative thoughts, the things that we think about why we're not perfect, the things that we dwell on to kind of not make us feel good. So let those go, let those thoughts, those opinions go. And start to just connect to how open you feel, how free you feel at this moment how peaceful you feel at this moment, and enjoy this moment here and now. Just relax. Filling your body with peace and ease and openness as you relax deeply into Shabbat.
without moving, take a moment just to notice the body. Notice your mind clear and peaceful. Start to very slowly wiggle your fingers and your toes as you slowly bring awareness back into your physical body, feeling yourself present on your mat. Taking a nice deep inhale, stretch your arms all the way over your head, exhaling out any sighs, sounds, or moans. Make it a beautiful deep stretch, hugging your knees and pulling them into your chest. Rock it side to side, nice and slow, awakening up that lower back. And then when you're ready, just roll yourself all the way over to the right side of your mat. Letting your head rest gently onto your inner right arm. So you're creating a soft pillow for your head to rest. Be with your stillness. Be with your peace. Now remember, sometimes our sense of perfection gets in the way of us being able to just do the best that we can. We feel that we're not perfect at it, so why bother? Let that go, because that can be an obstacle that becomes something that is in your way of moving forward. So when we always allow our mind to be open to receive, instead of setting these preconceived guidelines or how we should move through our practice or what the pose should look like, we get in our own way sometimes. So with practice, just kind of letting everything flow in its own way is better than feeling that you have to be perfect at it. So the pose becomes its own perfection at that moment when you allow everything to go. Just, just get move out of your way. So with that said, let's slowly come back up into a seated position. Take your time to come up nice and slow. And sit up nice and tall and bring your hands into Anjali Mudra with your thumbs to the center of your heart. And just know that you're perfect right now. The practice was perfect the way it was. As long as you go into it with an open mind, knowing that you'll do the best you can. So that you always can feel that full benefit of the practice rather than being disappointed and living with that. So that's living with some negative energy. And maybe just for today, just feel open and just notice and catch yourself when you are starting to bring that negative thought in. to Something that maybe you say, oh, I can't do that. It's too challenging. Just have that beginner's mind and look at it as a challenge to see what you can possibly achieve. So with that being said, let's close our practice. <clears throat> we'll chant OM one time. Take a nice deep breath in. <laughs> Slowly and gently lower your chin to your chest as you bow to the light and love that shines within you. Know that that light and love shines brightly within each and every one of us. Namaste. And thank you very much, everyone. Hope to see you again soon. Enjoy this beautiful day.